Hello, welcome back to this video where we look at being able to find the power series representation for some common functions that we've yet to do. Um, e to the x, sine x, and cosine x using the formula that we um, developed, can't say derived, but just the formula that we developed in the previous video. We're going to find the Maclaurin series for e to the x by just calculating these coefficients. The function at zero, the derivative at zero, second derivative at zero, dividing by two factorial, and on forever. And then we'll get the general formula, and then we'll be able to know for what x's does it converge. Got to be able to find the interval of convergence as well. So let's get started. We have e to the x is our function. What's nice about e to the x is its derivative is itself. So when you have to take these derivatives of the first few terms, it's just itself. So we have e to the x, the first derivative is e to the x. So this is the process that we're going to do. In the first column here, we're going to take all our derivatives. Second column, we're going to plug in a. In this case, Maclaurin series, a is 0. Third column, we're going to divide by n factorial. And then we're going to have our first five, six terms or whatever. And from that, we are to be able to figure out the formula of the nth term and then use it to find the interval of convergence. So let's keep this thing going. So second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative. Uh, stop there. That should be enough. And now let's plug in a, which is zero. What's the, what's the function at zero? It's going to be one. What's all these guys at zero? They're going to be one. You see, the coefficient is not just the nth derivative at zero. You also have to divide by n factorial. Okay. Now, by definition, 0 factorial is 1. Okay, but 1 factorial is 1 and 2 factorial is 2. It's when you get to 3 factorial that you get 6. And 4 factorial is 24. But leave it as the factorial, though. Because um, if you're going to find the pattern, it's best to leave it in some kind of format. where, Especially a format that involves n. And so, um, so we get a 1, another 1. Then we get a half, or 1 over 2 factorial, we'll write it as 1 over 3 factorial, and then 1 over 4 factorial. So we've, we have on hand the first five coefficients. Coefficients on what? This is the Maclaurin series. So the coefficients on x to the nth power. So the constant term is the first guy. And then the second guy is a coefficient on x. And the third guy is a coefficient on x squared and x cubed and x to the fourth. And we sum these up. And that gives us the Maclaurin series for e to the x. All right. What's the pattern? Well, the nth derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 4. Uh, I'm sorry, the nth factorial. N factorial. And that's the multiplier on x to the n. 1 over n factorial is the multiplier on x to the n. So we have, that's enough. It's not foolproof, but that's enough right there to, to get an idea of what the power series for e to the x is. Now we're interested, though, in saying what x's make this converge. I mean, it, you know, it makes no sense just to say this is the power series without saying what x's it is valid for. We know the function has a domain of all real numbers. But is it possible that there are some x's that will make this series diverge? We have to throw them out if that's the case. How do we find the interval of convergence? We go to the ratio test, where we go in and put in a sub n plus 1, and then divide by a sub n, which will be reciprocating. And then we, we work to figure out then what, um, what values of x would make it converge by um, taking the n plus 1 factorial, making it n plus 1 times n factorial to cancel. Taking the x to the n plus 1 and making it x to the n times x to cancel. Leaving us with the absolute value of x over n plus 1. I don't need parentheses at the bottom there. I don't know why I put them. And so when you're doing the ratio test, it's got to be less than 1. We force this to happen. What would make this less than 1? Now, x is a constant. n is going to infinity. A constant divided by something that's going to infinity is going to be 0, which is always less than 1, no matter what the constant x is. And so when you get this case, uh, when you're doing the ratio test and you get a 0 out for the limit, 
there's nothing that can make it diverge. It converges for all x. And the technical way to say that is it's from minus infinity to infinity. So we did it. And we're going to add this to our list. Remember, we, built, we started building a list of functions that we know the power series representation for. We have four of them. This is number five. Okay. All right, great. Let's go ahead and get sine x. And then maybe we can breeze through cosine x because we'll have the pattern down. We'll know what's going on. All right, sine x. Uh, first column is all the derivatives. So first up, first derivative is cosine x. All right, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Now be careful. What's the derivative of negative sine? Negative cosine. Doing great. Derivative of negative cosine? Positive sine. And it's, we're back to where we started at. This is like a cycle. The derivative of sine is cosine. It's going to complete, you know, continue to complete this cycle if we keep on going forever. All right, great. Uh, what's our job on the second column? We have to plug in A, which in this case for a Maclaurin series is zero. So, but, but the, the function at zero, that's the sine of zero. That's zero. Everyone that has sine is going to zero out. The cosine guys are going to go between one and minus one. The cosine of zero is one. Sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one, but there's a negative in front. Sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. So the, the odd, like one and three and five, they appear and they alternate, but the even terms go away. They have a zero for their numerator of their coefficient. There's still the denominator of the coefficient. Yes, the third column we're supposed to divide by in factorial. And what we're recognizing then is that even terms go away. Odd terms alternate between 1 and minus 1, starting with the 1. And so we have 0, 1, 0. Negative 1 over 3 factorial. 0 again. Positive 1 over 5 factorial. Okay. What are these guys? Now we have full coefficients, C sub n's. Coefficients on what? Coefficients on x to the n. We have our constant term, which is 0. Our first term is an x. No squared term. Then we have a cubic term. No fourth degree term. Then we have a fifth degree term. We only have odd powers. And we need a formula that represents that. We have two options. 2 and minus 1, 2 and plus 1. There's more options, but let's go with one of these two. And so we want to start this thing with n equals 0. So let's choose the 2 and plus 1 option. And we have exactly what we need. We want to alternate now. Don't forget the alternating part. So we want the first guy to be positive when n is 0. So that's going to be uh, negative 1 to the n. x is to the 2 and plus 1. We're divided by 2 and plus 1 factorial. That's the pattern. That's the power series with the first four terms there. Um, yeah, so it does, the, it does the, the odd only for you. You don't have to let n start at 1 and then skip to 3. No, by, by reformulating and having n start at 0 and using the formula 2n plus 1, it only spits out the odds. It skips right over the evens. Okay, um, interval of convergence. Well, a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Very careful here. There's a lot of places to make a mistake. When you replace n by n plus 1, you're getting 2n plus 3 for these guys. So 2n plus 2 and then plus a 1. Um, so you'll have x who's to the 2n plus 3, and you'll have a 2n plus 3 factorial. All right. Uh, above that will be a, a 2n plus 1 factorial. Underneath the x term will be a x to the 2n plus 1. But those guys are 2n plus 3s. How do you handle a 2n plus 3 factorial? Well, you got to take off the 2n plus 3 and take off the 2n plus 2. Then you'll be left with the 2n plus 1 factorial to cancel. Break apart the exponent on the x to the 2n plus 3. Um, you don't have to break it apart exactly like I did here. But in the end, you end up with an x squared who's on top of the product of 2n plus 3 and 2n plus 2. And like in the previous example, x is a constant. The denominator is the n going to infinity. And so that's a, that's a polynomial 
quadratic who's going to infinity there's no way that this is going to be divergent no matter what x is this zero this limit is zero who is always less than one there's no x that will make this diverge you converge for all x your interval of convergence is the entire real line so we did it we have the sine x power series first few terms of it and its interval of convergence great job and now this would be number six on our list okay um, i wanted to do cosine as well but we'll start the next video with cosine and then we'll be able to have the whole list of uh seven series and and we'll just wait for the next video for that um, thank you for watching um if you have any questions don't be afraid to ask comment down below like and subscribe um my name is nakaya rimmer i'm here to help you through this journey nearing the end of the calc 2 journey and uh, so you know make sure that you get the concept of taylor series down all right thank you i'll see you in the next video